Uh, response video. Yay! <laughs> um, anyway, it should be a long one. Ah, uh, this Ludite Returns guy, again, has made one of his, whatever they are. I don't know what these, I, I don't know. I mean, they're just so much verbiage and, and, and talking around without saying anything direct. Yeah, something like that. Well, anyway, I, I don't know. Start around two minutes when he starts to get somewhere around a subject. To the anti-natalism and ruins video, as with morality, the actualization of our reality conceptions uh, proceeds in terms of possible worlds. For example, uh, Benetarian, or what could perhaps be deemed analytic anti-natalism, deems a certain possible world, namely one with population zero, as maximally uh, ethical. This grounded in the conception of the actual world. Uh, yeah, well, anyway, so I guess he's arguing here that, yeah, some sort of obvious thing, <laughs> like, yeah, you compare things when you do value equations. And so, um, yeah, it just seems, obviously you compare things that are going to have a future impact. I mean, most stuff that we deal with, deal with in terms of a week from now or a month from now or 20 years from now or 100 years from now. Um, we don't really fix the past. We try to fix the future. And that's the only point to having, that, that's where the value is, is in the future. I mean, right now, there isn't a hell of a lot I can do about anything. Okay, but I might be able to do something about tomorrow. Jeez. ...world in which existers are always harmed by coming into existence. Of course, I do not believe this conclusion follows from Benatar's asymmetry, even if its premises are granted in their entirety, but... Yeah, well, that doesn't... You know, saying you don't do that, well, then you have to explain how you escape that logic, okay? Because there is a certain fundamental logic to the idea uh, that... Um, you know, they're, 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 we are need machines. I mean, you don't like these words used to describe what we do, but what we do when we become conscious is we become a needful organism. Um, and that that need itself, the creation of a needful organism, is not something necessary. There's no function for it. It can only interact with other needful organisms. It can only be relevant to other needful organisms. And if you just don't create the need, then you don't create any downside li liability. So it's like building nuclear power plants when you don't need energy. Like you have some perfect energy source. You know, just some perfect one, like little thing, and it just produces zillions of volts of electricity, and you, you don't have any need for nuclear power plants, and people still say, let's build them because they like them, because they're, because they're familiar with them. Why would you risk the danger they potentially <laughs> can melt down into? Um, why would you risk the harm that will be incurred if, if it can serve no function? This, this, this is a pretty important logical question. And to just slough it off like, I don't buy it. Well, that's not much of a freaking response. Sorry. It is not here my purpose to flog dead horses, so to speak. Yeah, again, you think the horse is dead. You haven't flogged it. You haven't. You haven't done. You haven't even. You, you haven't even hurt its feelings. All right. I mean, the horse is sitting here saying, "Well, what? This is your argument. I don't believe it. That's the best you got. Your argument is nature says so. Well, what argument have you made? Your your argument is all value is subjective nonsense." Well, that's just sub that's subjective nonsense. That's completely fallacy. That's like a religious theory. Oh, there's no real thing such as harm in the world. When a sentient, if I stick a knife in a baby's head, it's not absolutely, without a doubt, beyond a reasonable doubt, bad for that kid. It's not a bad thing that's taking place. There isn't a bad being incurred. A negative event is happening. And unless this kid is the future Adolf Hitler or some other weird scenario that would somehow justify not only killing it, but killing it in a harsh and brutal manner, causing buckets and buckets of suffering, there'd be nothing. There's nothing here, idiot. I mean, even... even, even I watched the Aliens movie the other day, the f number four or whatever it was, right? And the aliens getting sucked out of the spaceship... And you can see the anguish on Ripley's face, like, oh, you know, because it's suffering. And even though it's a terrible thing, it'll eat your brain, it'll just, you know, it'll kill you without even giving a fuck. I mean, it's still suffering right there in front of her. It's an obvious negative. The goddamn thing is suffering. 
You can't figure that out? I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, this is where I'm going to start getting rude. Because what the hell am I talking to people who can't figure out that pain is the value? At least one of them. I mean, if I have to concede something. But it's certainly a value. Absolutely, without a fucking doubt. <sighs> without a friggin' doubt. Consider the words of Nietzsche Zarathustra. Who the fuck cares? I mean, I'm just so sick of this name-dropping motherfucking shit. But go ahead, do your little fucking bullshit. I have my way, where is yours? Deep. Yeah, whatever. Again, so, so everybody just makes up their own reality, blah, 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 blah. We don't give a fuck about the truth. How, how yeah, let's just, if you want to believe it's a flat earth, it's okay. You want to sit there and do biological experiments, it's okay. You want to play Dr. Frankenstein, it's okay. You want to sit there and, and have syphilis and, and, and anthrax and smallpox as pets in little aquariums, it's okay. Fuck you, it's not okay. Anyway, does not exist. As with the world's great religions, morality says otherwise. And even the moral nihilist in agreement with Nietzsche can, uh, may take his way to be that of impediment to another's way. There is a sense in... Whatever. Uh, you know, again, this isn't just about a bunch of selfish assholes writing up some sort of, you know, document of self selfriosity where they don't trespass against each other's um, interest, okay? But they still act in a manner that is totally... Um, you know, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have dog fights, and I'm going to have bull fights, and I'm going to, you know, sell women into, into rape slavery. Uh, I mean, come on. No, that's not how it works. And it's not for you elitist little humans who get to decide who and what has rights. Okay? The right exists in the thing itself. Okay? We recognize rights. We don't make them up, jackass. Which, we are all ontological uh, imperialists. It's simply not enough, majoritively speaking, to say with Nozick that we want our individual lives to express our conceptions of reality. We oh, whatever. You, you know, it's, it's a, a, express your conceptions of reality. Now, is, is that really what's going on here? I mean, I don't think most thinking people think that all they're doing is, is, is making some shit up and then... Um, talking about the shit they made up. I think there is a standard where they're trying to find the truth and they're trying to find a description of reality, a, a, a way of describing it that's compelling and that's uh, complete, like Einstein. Um, they in, need a unification theory, some sort of, some sort of um, blueprint that just ties it all together. And that's what they're searching for. Um, they're searching for that context and that um, um, that, that that indestructible um, you know sack of phraseology um, that can be thrown at any individual it, it, it's universal translation it can be understood by anyone from any coming from any perspective because it's that clear it's such a clear and concise description of the round world want the lives of others to express our conceptions of reality. These conceptions and the normative frameworks that are contingent on them often conflict. To call a person's existentially anchoring conceptual schemes into question is no small thing. Uh, relinquishing them... <laughs> existential scheme? Why, why do you have to talk like this? I mean, really, what is this crap? What, what does anybody do with that idiotic presumption. First, the presumption that somehow everything that somebody knows philosophically is some sort of beyond science or beyond knowledge. Um, no, it really isn't. I mean, we can start with some basic premises that we're not in the matrix, that it isn't a big delusion, that there is a material universe. Now we can start talking about flat earths and, and the evolution over four billion years of a DNA molecule. That's not existentialism involves a kind of death. This calling into que question is consequential enough trying to prevent a person or persons from either maintaining or actualizing their reality conception is often cause for war. Oh, whatever. Their reality conception again. 
you know, so you're just talking about a philosophy as if these, these philosophies are all of equal value somehow or equal respectability somehow or that they have some, all have some kind of relationship to a word like logic and rationality and reason. I mean, there is a, there is a reasonable doubt standard that we've sort of gotten comfortable with. And I think it's probably a good standard. There's things that are reasonable and there's things that are unreasonable. We can have those categories and say them kind of emphatically. Uh, metaphorically and literally. Ideally, this war would uh, take place within the confines of philosophic discussion. And <laughs> yeah, well, it wasn't philosophical in discussion. If you go back and look at wars, it's not about philosophy, all right? It really, it was about emotionality, all right? It was about emotions of hate, all right, and, and perversions of the reality. Okay, I mean, we, we saw the propaganda produced by the Nazis. They weren't arguing in defense of reality. They were arguing in defense of their hate, their bigotry, their pettiness, their resentments. If only everyone heeded Paul's exhortion to come let us reason together. Unfortunately, this is often not the case. Yeah, well, you don't demonstrate any any real respect for that notion. Um, you're rude and obnoxious. You belittle arguments. You strangle vocabulary to, for, for, the, for merely the pretense of authority. Um, you play a, a game here with, with the truth. As reasonable a person as I am, uh, <laughs> which is pretty reasonable, uh, even I am not immune to this phenomenon, this propensity for a reactionary response, almost violent in the way of dismissal. Less sophisticated responses on initially being uh, introduced to antinatalism might go something like this. Well, yeah, why? So, so, you know, instead of dealing with your own ignorant responses, now you're going to demonstrate even more ignorant responses? Why don't you actually try to make an intelligent response? <laughs> yeah, that'd be, a, that'd be an interesting change of pace. If you, the antinatalists, don't want to have kids, don't have kids. But don't try to shove your crappy ethical system into my wife's vagina. Or, since when did cowardliness become a virtue? So, so why did you articulate these two arguments you're recognizing as being unthoughtful and basically ignorantly ignorant? Um, why? Well, what's the point of that? So I now make the counter-arguments to them now that you've brought them up and probably confused your audience as if you were making those arguments because you didn't say anything plainly enough for your audience to even understand you. Now, is, isn't that sort of like... You know, I mean, isn't that just complete demonstration of the fact that you are not connected to reality at all? Is that you have chosen to write a script that most of your audience will not understand? Brilliant. Antinatalists are not immune either. In Mintham, in a response to an old video of mine, stated that the sooner I die, the better. And since having taken up the issue of anti Yeah, well, again, so, so this glib um, quote mining and perversion of context, for what purpose? The argument has been made. Um, it's a violation of will. Um, so if, 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 if you impose life on something, you are not getting consent. That's the argument. The argument is also that there's no more fundamental thing you can do on this earth besides, you know, you can kill somebody, you can take their life, um, or you can impose life. These are big things. And if you do one of them against somebody's will, that's the crime. The crime is against the will. And so I was just making the argument, if you can recklessly discount my will and say, I will be a perpetual victim of your procreation propensity, your desire to actualize yourself through the creation of these individuals who will find your game revolting and want to puke down your eye sockets. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the same thing. So I'm just saying, when you impose life on me, it's no better than me wishing to impose life, death on you. I'm violating your will. You're not getting that? 
Oh, no, I think you do get that. You just don't care about the truth again here and would rather just mislead people and imply that I had some death wish or that I'm making little voodoo dolls against you. I couldn't give a rat's ass about you, okay? All I care about is the is the distortion and perversion of the argument that you're making on the Internet. I would love to just ignore you. All right, because I think you are a pretentious, dishonest piece of shit. Um, but yeah, you're making videos on the internet, making arguments that are going to deceive people, so now I have to make a counter argument. Antonio recently, I received several private messages from Antonio wishing death upon me. Ontological imperialists, indeed. Oh, indeed. Again, so there's no context there, and I, I guess I would almost say I would, um, I, I dare you to, I, to make any of those things public. If the individual sends you permission to make their death threat public, will you please do so? I don't believe you, fucker. These reactions on both sides of the equation are a testament to how intimately people are tied to their uh, reality conceptions. Anyways, on to the question. You ask, uh, what can we do to help get people's consciousness ordered properly to where the suffering of sentience takes priority? I found this question particularly interesting because of the use of the word properly. Uh, yes, because you are an idiot who doesn't think there's any such thing as a more efficient, less friction, less wasteful way of doing something. Like you establish what the values are and then you analyze the system and try to take the waste out of it. So you try to limit the number of little kids that die on the Disney ride, right? Because there's a certain number that die every three years or something. And you say, well, let's reduce that number by 50%. And so you analyze this system to reduce the harm. Um, and you don't think there's any value in that. Mm -hmm. Because you're insane. This word bespeaks stupid. of the function, uh, function dichotomy uh, and ultimately of Aristotelian virtue ethics, a tradition I am... <laughs> yeah, you're just simply opposed to the idea that you're obligated by something called reality not to be a selfish, consuming hunk of shit that takes more than he gives, that lives a life where the world is in deficit. You just want to eat it like a potato chip and shit it out on somebody's head and say, thank you, I've gotten my share. And that's all you give a fuck about because you're really, really, really stupid. Pathetic, dude. Of course, the question contains two presuppositions, and these are the very things uh, that are under question. Right, the very things that are under question is the fact that suffering sucks. Okay, oh no, we have to argue about that forever. Um... <laughs> yeah, and I don't even know what the second one is. Let's get to it, I guess. First, that there is even such a thing as the properly ordered consciousness. That the right, right, that there's something like the truth. So he's just basically said, there's no such thing as a true understanding of the physical dynamics of our existence, um, the reality of our existence, the fact of evolution, the fact of our psychology, the fact of... Um, uh, the the mechanisms of addiction or delusion, like none of these these manifestations of our neurology could be studied and analyzed and understood that they could be seen for the trap or for the 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 um, the, 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 the the distortion they create. Like we couldn't analyze our own eyeball and understand it has dead spots that the brain fills in, and that that would be important knowledge to have. No, we can't do any of that. There is such a thing as called into question by varying moral uh, moral anti-realisms. And second, again, no one. Again, who who is who in this argument you are generically arguing against is using words like morality. I don't think anybody is. So again, you just keep trying to tie this to a dogma. There is no dogma. There's this atheist argument, okay, that we are a product of a DNA molecule replicating. And that the ethics involved in that competitive selection process are um, um, vacant. They're they're vacuous. They're they're non-existent. Is what they are, um, it, because the molecule is not intelligent. 
we are, so we can see things the molecule can't. That it is the proper function of human persons to have a consciousness structured and disposed so that reducing, eliminating, or preventing suffering takes priority. I shall not here discuss the ought that the question inevitably raises. Again, you know, these people with their problem with the word ought is just so laughable. I, I mean, what, what purpose would a brain have if it can't ought, if it can't say something like, well, we ought to maybe have a safety device like an airbag in the car, and we, maybe we ought to make the tires out of rubber that doesn't fall apart, and maybe we ought to do, yeah, I mean, it just it's just basic function of intelligence. There's no point. The whole premise of intelligence is problem solving. The whole functionality of it is to di is to discover, or, or to solve, or to resolve. To solve or resolve. That's what intelligence does. So here you are um, um, pretending to be an intellectual, pseudo-intellectualizing, um, and you don't even understand the basic function of intelligence. Ugh, to prove your pseudo-ness. But shall attempt to answer your question. The prognosis for antinatalism does not look good by the way of actual application or voluntary adoption. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Um, the prospect of a lot of causes didn't look too good before the prospect started looking good, right? Um, so that argument goes nowhere. Uh, and certainly the counter-argument, the prospect for the human race getting into the future in any kind of manner that any of us would find acceptable, um, <laughs> you know, uh, isn't too damn good either, is it? Hmm? Is it? Are you going to make the logical argument that we're on the brink of phantasmagorical, um, you know, friendly fun? I don't think so. Italists are not going to do anything more than throw a few buckets of water at a forest fire. Now, certainly I'm no prophet. Oh, whatever. Um, you know, again, I mean, you could make the argument that, you know, in, in the right circumstance, a few buckets of water prevents the nuclear meltdown. Um, you know, rightly applied, uh, you know, a handful of cement, you know, stops the Hoover Dam from collapsing. You know, uh, rightly applied, uh, you need very little um, to to create a lot. Uh, you need a phrase sometimes will do it. Okay, judge a man based on the content of his character, not the color of his skin. Sometimes it only takes, like, whatever that is, 12 words? I don't know. That's all it takes. But the difficulties in restructuring and reconstituting people's consciousness... So well, again, instead of saying reconstituting their consciousness, you're just basically saying the idea of of educating people or informing people or enlightening people or, or seeing any hope that people will acquire um, better sensibilities, like they can get over bullfighting as entertainment or dogfighting, like we have in this country, that they could actually become civilized and say, no, we're not going to let people gain their entertainment on the suffering of animals. I mean, that's just plain stupid. Um, yeah, we're not going to have real gladiator wars. We're not going to feed the criminals to lions. I mean, we're not going to do a lot of things because it's uncivilized and stupid. And so you're just arguing somehow that civilization will, will no longer grow. Will not, there is no inevitable process of civilization. Um, but, and, and history demonstrates you to be wrong. Okay? And especially modern history where in the last 200 years our knowledge base has grown exponentially um, with the dangers, unfortunately. Uh, but that's the real fact. The fact is we've answered a ton of questions about our reality in the last 200 years. And uh, that has real impact on the future and on the prospect of unification theory. Suffering takes priority seem insurmountable, and this is grounded in certain descriptive facts. First among them are the presence of reality conceptions or metaphysical understandings that provide... Yeah, and metaphysical understandings again. Now, why, why do you presume that everybody has a metaphysical understanding? I, I mean, you, really, you think every trial there's some 
huge amount of ambiguity about the truth being claimed or proven or demonstrated? No, sometimes it's quite the fuck obvious what took place. And there's truths people believe in that are quite the fuck obvious, like suffering, sucking. For people, a meaning in the midst of their suffering. Consider Victor Frankl's words, expounding on... Oh, let's grab some more names. Consider my ass. Translation, shut up. ...his school of existential analysis. It is one of the basic tenets of logotherapy that man's main concern is not to gain pleasure or to avoid pain, but rather to see a meaning in his life. Oh, whatever. Uh, what does this have to do with the reality? You know what the main concern is? Is that you are an entity, a machine, functioning in the world. So, like, if you were a cardboard box, or if you were a can of soup, or if you were an automobile, or if you were a Hoover Dam, the point would be is that you would have an efficiency, a productivity, a functionality in the world. And what are you producing? Okay, you're producing a consciousness inside your head that you're maintaining, that you're trying to keep comfortable. And what else are you doing? You're impacting other consciousnesses. So we could duplicate this person. There's a whole bunch of others in this mist back here. And this will impact them. This can give them some food. Or this can help them. Or give them a kind word. Or do some other thing for them. And help satisfy and please and comfort their little neurology. But that's what we're doing here. We're consuming negative sensation and producing positive sensation that's what's taking place here that's the efficiency equation that's the value that is being used up in this scenario that's how we be good cardboard box <sighs> that is why man is uh, even ready to suffer on the condition to be sure that his suffering has a meaning. Well, again, now this kind of nonsense just sits there and justifies any philosophy. Anybody can believe anything, okay? I mean, uh, serial killers have believed they had ethical authority and right to do what they did. Kings, noblemen, noblemen, people called noblemen, raped women, raped people's wives, um, thought they were entitled that they were superior enough to deserve the indulgence, um, you know, that they could basically eat somebody else's life for dinner, and it was okay because they're worth it. I mean, that's just complete and utter nonsense. These machines have to judge their impact by some rational standard, and a rational standard is your little brain doesn't have better feelings than the other little brains that are having feelings. Yeah, it looks like there might be a little brain right there. Anyway, the greatest source for this discovery of meaning is, of course, religion. As long as people... Well, whatever. We know where religion came from, okay? It's the ignorant science of the past, all right? It's the mistake science. And the reason why it still exists is because of our addicted psychology, a word you don't like, but that's the fact of it. We become comfortable, acclimated, and addicted to things being in our lives. We're brought up in it, and then we don't know how to function without it. That's the liability of our human nature. We like the path that we walk every day to be the same path, so we know it. So we know where the mountain lions are, where the cliffs are, where the slippery parts are. Uh, it's comforting to our psychology for things to re certain things to remain stable and the same. The world to stay around. Uh, you know, gravity to stay the same. The air pressure to stay the same. We don't like having to change and adapt. And so that's the liability, is that this old nonsense of the past, we're stuck with it until we can demonstrate finally its fallibility. And we're getting closer to that. It's like UFOs. I mean, once we have cell phones and digital cameras everywhere, all of a sudden UFO theory gets wackier and wackier because all of a sudden it can't be just witness testimony anymore because now you can always ask the guy, well, why didn't you take a picture with your cell phone? You know, so the jig is sort of up. 
and we just have to do the jig is up thing for this religion thing. And you know the only way it survives now is through um, ignorant isolation. Anybody exposed to the world, most people exposed to the world early, having the freedom to think, will think differently. They will not run to religion as the answer. The, the only way they get religion is it has to be beaten into them, figuratively. Or, to use J.K. Hyussman's words, consoled by the beacon fires of the ancient hope, uh, as long as... Which you are selling. So you're the purveyor of the, all right, let's not call it God. Let's just add it. Let's, let's change the wording and we'll call it hope now. Well, we pray to hope. We will revere hope. You will hope that a DNA molecule knows what it's doing. You will hope that the universe knows what it's doing. And just play along. Because you, you can't use your brain to just figure out what's going on. That you can't analyze your psychology and see your obvious attachments and addictions. That they're all silly and arbitrary. Um, and therefore of little value to compensate for somebody else's real pain. You're consuming more gasoline than you are producing product, miles per gallon. Uh, to quote Hans Kung, people believe that... Again, fuck this quote crap. No matter how desperate my situation may be, God is here too. Not only in light and in joy. Yeah, what's the point of this rhetoric? I mean, really, what is the point of this? Does this have some rational theory basis? We don't have to believe in God, all right? It's a manifestation of psychology, and there are plenty of people to demonstrate that you can, be, you can live quite liber liberated from it. This is just like a vegetarian argument. Everybody could be vegetarian tomorrow. It's just a mindset, all right? It's a meme. And all that has to happen is the meme has to be transferred to these other people. That's all. It's a simple idea. Once the idea is in their head, the concept is understood, the behavior changes. And if you don't raise somebody with the attachment, with the addiction, they're not going to acquire it. Don't raise them watching basketball, and they probably won't watch basketball. Boy, but in, also in darkness, grief, pain, and sadness, I can encounter him. My suffering, despite God forsakenness, can become the point of encounter with God. Thus, uh, Again, some more mumbo-jumbo, more preposterous, you know, whatever. Whatever the crazy religious, what was that nutty, uh, the one who wasn't even a Catholic, in the end. Mother Teresa. You want to quote Brother Teresa next? Who the fuck cares? All right, what people do to rationalize their lives, ignorant rationalizations. I'm not going to argue with a bunch of ignorant rationalizations. I'm going to argue that if you take the truth, if you analyze the science that we do know, and you put these things all together, even in a pop-up picture book, okay, there's none of those pop-up picture books are going to create anything called God. It just ain't going to happen. There's no rational reason to believe in God. And thus, I do not know a way around suffering, but I know a way through it. Uh, the prevention or delimiting of suffering. Is yeah, 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 whatever. Again, so, so you can play all kinds of psychological games. You can convince yourself of anything, and, and we, we've seen human beings do it. They'll blow up buildings full of little children. There's all kinds of wacky shit because of an idea in their head. Um, they'll commit hairy carry. They'll do stick knives in the hair and watch their guts pour out. So yeah, people can do all kinds of crazy stuff when they got some sort of crap in their head that says this makes sense. But it doesn't make any sense. What, you, you, and it's not about your suffering. Again, the subject of antinatalism is, is should you impose the risk on some new victim? That's the question, asshole. Is it rational, reasonable, fail-safe, sensible? Or is it just a preposterous thing you're doing because you're a selfish motherfucker? I think we know the answer is not going to take priority. The secularization hypothesis that was so popular back in the 70s has all but been completely abandoned by sociologists. Religion is here to stay and with it, so... Yeah, uh, 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 an overtly nonsensical statement. All right? Religion breeds in ignorance. And so as long as we, yes, as long as we keep people ignorant in the world, we're going to have a problem. But look, it's the Internet age. Eventually, the Internet will even get to Africa. 
okay? It will become a functional part of every bit of this plant. If civilization was to still be here 500 years from now, there would be no way to suppress knowledge. Exposure to ideas, expressions, um, notions of reality. Um, you just can't keep. You, you you just can't keep children that isolated um, forever. And the fact that these crazy Islamic countries can still do it, uh, yeah, they can get away with it. But it ain't happening anywhere else in the world. Religion is dying in the world. Um, it's just that the religious are the irresponsible breeders, so they still have a huge presence in the world, but they're not what the, that they're not what what minds tend to do when they're exposed to knowledge. The suffering. I mean, when you look at the increasingly culturally influential relative to the rest, looming monstrosity of Islam, both relatively and intrinsic to itself, the idea that preventing the suffering of sentience should take priority is like a... a ch I, again, I, I mean, you really think that Islam is going to survive a thousand years? Or ten thousand years of, of, of if civilization were if we could come up with some sort of theory of of civilization like even if all, all technology just stopped right where we are so we just didn't get into any deeper holes of of technical threat um, and we just perpetuated this system for a thousand years do you really think religion would survive that that it could that 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 isolation could be maintained as a practical matter. Now, I mean, I would argue not. Chihuahua before a massive Great Dane. Second among the difficulties is the general fact that while people do tend to avoid, avoid pain where possible, majoritively we tend to value the pleasures of existence, the joys of discovery and accomplishment, purposeful fulfillment and happiness more right 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 okay you get your, you have to smoke your cigarette you enjoy your cigarette and then your cigarettes burned up and gone yeah okay we get that um, you're hungry you eat you're full yeah we get that uh, let's not glorify that process it's not the same suffering and an orgasm they're not the same thing but then we disvalue whatever pain we might experience Sometimes the pain is simply too great to bear. Overwhelmingly, it isn't. Third among the... Di no, the only thing that makes it bearable is our fear of the, the death and, and, you know, and the pain getting worse. We're always trying to establish comfort. Um, and and we always want to try to get there by going forward, not having to go backward. We'd rather not have to endure suffering to get out of suffering. Um, that's just logical. Uh, and so that's the game we play. We cling to these, the word you used before of hope and other kinds of unrealistic notions. Um, because that's all we've got. It's either dark or darker. So yeah, we try to get, we try to stay out of darker. Duh. That's not, um, an admirable thing. It's not an intellectual thing. It's not a strictly rational thing. It's not a strictly logical thing. It's something addicts do. That's what addicts do. I mean, you're making my argument for me. Difficulties is love. As long as there are lovers, there will be sufferers. And as long as people are willing to suffer and die for the sake of love, and as long as uh, there is the desire to extend an unconditioned love to a being external to oneself. And uh, un to extend unconditioned love to a being other than oneself. Again, you, no, you're taking love. You're expecting love. You're stealing from something else. You're obliging something else. You're obligating something else to serve your love, your passion for the heroine. Um, what the hell is that? So don't sit there and play games like that and glorify what you're doing. You're not giving anything. You're takers. You're not givers. To experience this love, the suffering of sin... And yeah, I, I mean, just so preposterous to sit there and, and, and uh, you know, make a video. Um, let's see, how, how do you... I don't know how to explain it. But, yeah, to, to, to be so um, precise in language... You know, you know, to strangle your your verbiage so excessively to 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 you know this existential uh, you know 
um, whatever you called it, contemplative function of your brain, or however you described it, and then you'll throw a word like love out, like it's supposed to have meaning. I mean, that's just so fucking funny. Because you know you're using it because it's a word that has meaning emotionally to people, and that's the only reason why you're using it. Not because the word actually has a definition. Not that it's actually describing anything real. No. So why don't you why don't you do a video explaining exactly what love is, asshole, and explain how it isn't it completely um, de- defined and derived through um, addictions, emotional addictions. Vince is not going to take priority. Fourthly is hatred. As long as there exists hatred so strong that the suffering and death of the object of said hatred is perhaps sought above all else, and even experiences intrinsically good, suffering isn't going anywhere. Um, I don't even know what that means, but, but look, you know, um, the, the, the point is, is that the, 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 there's a trespass here. And the trespass doesn't stop. I mean, I'm not the victim of antinatalists. All right? I'm not the victim of people who didn't trespass. I'm a victim because somebody trespassed. They decide they had an authority they didn't have. They had a competence they didn't have. And so they create a Frankenstein, and then they don't want to take responsibility for the creation of Frankenstein. It's just that simple. And so Frankenstein's just left here sitting there saying, well, how do I stop the existence of Frankensteins? Because I don't want to keep coming back to your shithole and having to explain to you that you're living in a shithole, that you're all fucking babbling retards, essentially eating your own fucking poo, and it's revolting. It's embarrassing to intelligence. Um, they're, they're, it's just, it's, it's, this is disgusting what you're doing, you silly creeps. And so, yeah, I'm going to try to stop you. Because that's my only choice. I can't... Me isn't creating the problem. Stopping me isn't going to fix the problem. I have to stop you. You're the ones creating the problem, not me. Not the world, not trees, not the dirt. You! 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 This could go on. Added to it could perhaps be the aversion, general aversion to risk aversion and heroism. Uh, But for now, in answer to your question, you need to murder people's gods, stamp out the experience of meaningfulness, destroy hope, convince people that their lives are really... Oh, yeah. No, all you have to do to get people to appreciate that there's there's simple value here, that we are animals, and that we are trapped in in a rather sadistic and disgusting game. It's a bad game of chess, okay? A lot of players, a lot of pieces are being abused and knocked off the board. And so some nobles or some kings can play out their little game. But in the end, nothing wins. It all dies. There is no real winner. Um, And we can accept that and just say, let's not keep playing the game. Let's just quit manufacturing new pieces. Let's play out our little but we have to because we're committed to it because we mechanically we we have wheels our wheels are on the rails we're going to have to run the rail because that's what we do but let's not make more rail runners shittier than they experience them banish love and abolish hatred <clears throat> yeah well whatever um to have a future you're going to have to do all that anyway too aren't you to preserve civilization, to have any hope of surviving the future in something other than a cockroach way of life. Double cockroach. I mean, you're already cockroaches. You're, just going, to be, you're going to be four-headed cockroaches. To avoid that dismal, horrid future, you're going to have to do all that shit too, jackass. So there's no... That, that, that makes... That, that is useless um, as argumentation. Uh, and uh, I don't think the question as posed means too much because I, I just, I mean, it just seems quite obvious. What do you have to do? Well, you have to make an argument. That's what you have to do. You come up with an argument that it's just too compelling, that people can't ignore. It's just too reasonable that they'll even convict O.J. or they'll even convict Michael Jackson, the god Michael Jackson. They'll even admit the truth. Um... Because you'll make the argument well enough that even those who are so bigoted and prejudiced and biased will be able to say, all right, uh, I, I get it. Um, 
you're not trying to destroy me. You're not trying to take all value out of my life. You're just trying to explain that this is dangerous. And until I really know what I'm doing, I have no business imposing it on somebody else. It's not, that's not a bold statement. It's not an obnoxious hope. It's not unreasonable to hope that people can do that much, that they can gain that much humility, to be a little bit struck um, by, by the fact that they have more power than they have competence. Okay, enough of the video. Blah, 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 blah. Now throw that in and such.